views and opinions expressed on Geeks Under the Influence are that of the panelists and not of our sponsors, Amazon.com and TeePublic. Parental discretion is advised. So I know I'm not the only one that caught that the sword that uh, Hoop uses in the prison was the Conan sword, right? Like we, yes. we all oh, caught yeah. that. Duh. Which it seems slightly out of place that there's like rusty crowbars and like chains, and then there's this beautiful immaculate Conan sword that's sitting there. Like that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Schwarzenegger left it there when he came to the U.S. I mean, it makes sense with like an '80s show Maybe? that I mean that you would saying. have that you would have a Conan sword well, for like an he, '80s he's from uh, close enough show. there. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it's from mean, close enough. It doesn't matter. You're not gonna have like a newer sword like the, the like in. Thor, like the Necro Sword, you're not going to have that instead of the Conan Sword for no. the 80s. Uh, because, thing, well, but. yeah, because I, I don't even think that character came out in the 80s in the Thor comics, did it? Gore the uh, Gore, Gore the God the- Butcher. Uh, no, I want to say it had to be late 90s or yeah. early That's 2000s. What I, was I don't know offhand. But. Uh, yeah, but for 80s nostalgia, yeah, it had to be. You the know, Conan I mean, sword. There's only a few amount of right. swords that yeah. you can pull. Yeah, from. exactly. But without from 86. But without without going lightsaber route, you know. I mean, yeah, you know, it makes me realize that in, in this era, in the 2020s, uh, we are severely lacking in iconic swords. <laughs> there's just not <laughs> enough. Oh, oh, totally. Oh, no, we got a lot of Game of Thrones swords. That was a Game that's of Thrones the most swords. That's true. We, we, that's we, true. We do have Game of Thrones swords. Yeah. That's sure. the most recent we got. Yeah. yeah. Now Fair. we do, yeah, uh, Brett was saying He-Man Sword, that with the new series, they did do some stuff with the Sword of Power. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That they mixed it up with it, which awesome. was very cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Loved oh, what they so did with stoked. that. Yep, yep. But now we finally have the Necro Sword in live action, which uh, Gore the God Butcher brought to the party. In oh, the, and that Mjolnir yes. absorbed. Yeah. Spoilers. 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 Like, Spoilers. Thunder. Mjolnir just <laughs> absorbed that motherfucker. That was awesome. That, that was beautiful. Well, and the, the whole fact of just having to do that one last big giant lightning bolt with it, too, mm-hmm. just to be like, <laughs> big middle finger right there, you yeah, know? Yeah. How If you were Thor, how pissed would you be that you like had Mjolnir for thousands of years like you and Mjolnir were like fucking college buddies you virtually know, you, your whole life like you were each other's best men in each other's wedding it's like you were fucking like thick as thieves and then your ex picks up this thing and now it can shotgun blast like it has this entirely new well, feature built uh, in in fairness he's the reason that she could raise it sure okay and and also I mean, it was smashed. So how but, else is it going to work when it's that's put like back together? M- Mjolnir's midlife crisis. <laughs> Instead of getting a Ferrari, Mjolnir decided to add a new power feature to itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Mjolnir's that, I mean, midlife crisis. Yeah. I think is good title. I mean, Mjolnir, title yeah. yeah, Mjolnir 2.0 was pretty badass. It I was. Say, it was. I really enjoyed the splintering and the coming back together. Yeah. Well, and it was even used like slightly variation as well a couple times. It wasn't just like a straight shot. Like a, yeah. I could kill four of you. No, there were a couple variations. It was on like how homing it missiles worked. and shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fly, dude. Like Mjolnir to whatever its target was. Yeah. I wish that like midlife. I would just end up with some new features. Like I can just, I I can jump real high now. You know that's just a thing well, I can do. You, that's great. Just like in real life, though, it, it works like a DLC. You pay a little extra, maybe you can get something. No, now I have <laughs> just as many cracks as that Mjolnir had in it, but it doesn't give me powers. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just more achy in the morning. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe he wakes up achy, and then he's like, oh, I got a job to do. I mean, right. maybe you don't know. You don't know his life. <laughs> I, I I would love to hear you voice that hammer now. You. Oh, I totally would. I, I'm achy. But I got a job to do. You know that's going to be on. I, mean, uh, I would love to nuzzle in Natalie Portman's bosom. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if that's fair. How, I like. I don't know if that's like the move she makes when she's sleeping. It's just like, oh, well, got a got a motorboat Mjolnir Again, before you I go don't, to bed. You don't know. That's true. These are things that's that true. we were not shown. So I'm going to use my imagination. I'm, gi- I'm giving you shit for making assumptions, but I'm also making. A hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> you crush your hammer the way you want to. I'll crush the way that the, my hammer the I, way I, I need. My to, hammer okay? pulls me off. Let's, let's yeah. be real. If if a woman had Mjolnir. I'm sure there's tons of things that they would be doing that they would not be able to show in a Marvel movie. Just think of just think of the the like BDSM True. possibilities of having a hammer that nobody else can lift except you. It's like no, you stay down. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the fact that just, you can even I mean, be hands off like, with it, a, you don't have to touch it. Let's say Thor is going down on Mighty Thor, and he's down there, and she just places Mjolnir on the top of his head. Like, oh, oh no, you're staying there. <laughs> well, but see, wow. he can lift it, so that wouldn't work. That's before. true. Okay, not with yeah. Thor. But yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Ben. Okay, <laughs> but we should get started. <laughs> Fuck. Um, so, yeah, we are, we are oh. going right to the, the, the superhero sex, like not even wasting any time. Fuck Hero, whatever. Herogasm. It's all good. Hero- oh, oh, God. Oh, That's God. a different episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah. We are talking about <laughs> Thor Love and Thunder, the new live-action Marvel movie that just released in theaters. So definitely, again, spoilers for this. We're going to be diving deep into the Taika Waititi uh, 
chaotic universe of Thor <sighs> that uh, we are definitely have a lot of opinions about. Yeah. So. Oh, there are opinions. <laughs> yeah, well, so. I mean, we love the dude. Exactly. Love his stuff. Absolutely. I just don't know why. Why is a big question that we're going to try to mm. answer on this episode of Geeks on the Influence. All things Thor, love, and thunder. Welcome. Woo! Oh, what was, oh, damn it. What was her catchphrase? Oh, well, there was a couple of them, technically. Eat but my eat hammer. hammer. My hammer yeah. was one. Yeah. That was the last one. That's when she told Thor right before she died. Yeah. <laughs> I I can respect working on getting a catchphrase. We worked on a catchphrase for GUI for like a better part of a year, I think. I, before... I, think, uh, I think it came out the first year. Was it the first year? Yeah, it was. Yeah. That was oh, yeah. I just because stole it from the song the same, that we used. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah. So. I, I think it was it more works, more so of a matter of should it be a consistent one or should you change yeah. it from episode yeah, to episode? I don't think it was consistent you, yeah. here, honestly. I think that's what you think. But I yeah. can respect trying out a few things before uh, before really settling on something. Mm, the way that they went about showing uh, Mighty Thor coming up with a catchphrase was definitely... It did not need to be seen. Yeah, it was it was a little much. Well, it... it like certain things, and, and again, we'll get into all this. Is that it was pushed too much to have a a couple of lines about it, make that make that one maybe two jokes. Keep going back to it, but, but yeah, when you it. when you go back to it four or five times throughout the yeah, show, yeah. it's like all right, it's over and done. Let it go. Uh, so before we get into the cavalcade of characters that we saw on Thor: Love and Thunder, let's talk about our contingency here. Uh, <laughs> talk about this show first off, of course. The Geek Father himself from Geek Fathers. We've got Scotty P. Hey, guys. Welcome. What's up? You've been on recently. What was the last one you were on? I, uh, Obi-Wan oh, Kenobi. Oh, the, the, uh, the plague episode. The, the pla- that yeah, that's basically sick. dubbed a plague episode, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> Glad I missed Damn. that one. Yeah, right? I, I know you're not too upset about not, that. Well, nah. That's just another reason why I'm not. Yeah, 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 fair. Yeah. <laughs> fair. It was a fun episode, but it yeah, was we, great. We paid for it. We, we did see that. See? May, might not have happened if you didn't choose to do an episode on Kenobi. Just saying. Just saying. You're saying there's some like midichlorian karma happening out there in the world? Oh, maybe. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> he used the word. Ew. Midichlorian karma. God. Fuck out of here. Um, uh, joining us for... It's been a little while since you've been on, Brett. Yeah. I, I was trying... I can't actually remember the episode that I was on last It time, was like... It was, it was, yeah, some Marvel movie. and Yeah, but I'm happy to be back. Yeah, and, happy uh, to have you. Yeah, and again... Like 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 the other folks here, I, I've 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 got some opinions, some some <laughs> happiness, and some frustrations. The yeah, look yeah. as we normally meet in the yard before we start recording, and the look on everyone's face as everybody walked up of this like <sighs> yeah. kind of where yeah, right. I mean I, we're gonna be talking about the positives as, as well, but there's this level that we all have of like fuck man, like yeah. I don't want to <laughs> well, because like it, it's it gonna did hit have positives like we just talked about one before the intro was. Mjolnir's reincarnation. He, yeah, Mjolnir became cool. way more badass. Yeah, yeah. And it was already badass. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Speaking of badass, uh, right? You've got a, a show coming up, right? Um, oh yeah. Well, th- th- well, it's the fancy, fancy you bringing it up because yeah. you know we hope to have the GUI guys on out and gals, uh, and it's going to be um, August twentieth over at the Raceway. So it's been our first time since uh, like fall of last year. So it's been a long time coming. Uh, our friends at Galaxy Con they put on a great show in the spring, but we're we're finally coming back uh, on our own here after about uh, almost ten months. I think we're gonna have a lot of good nerds, nice. a lot of good fans. Nice. Um, yes. it'll be. Uh, I think it's a it's a thing that people have been waiting for. Absolutely, yeah. and yes. I'm gonna have a, a few extra bucks than uh, I did last time, so I'm gonna probably take an hour to go buy unnecessary amounts of comic books. Fantastic, so, yeah. fair. Yes. Is is the goal coming out of the shit show we've had the last two years to get start ha- to have a spring one again? Uh, you know, moving forward, we're going to probably eyeball the like a summer event and then a fall event. But okay. I hope to okay. never wait this long again. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, a lot of this had to do with with delayed contracts and things like that. I just sure. had to ask because I mean, I I remember the sh- I remember when there was one year we had there was in VCU. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. in the co- like the common like that commons area on across the floors. You know, yeah. just, wait, was that the so, year that MC Chris? Like, yeah, yeah. Showed up for it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> it's just you know, just but I get what you, I completely get what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, and give Richmond that one. Big one, and also your vendors, because they're going to make a fuck ton of money. Yeah. That's the idea. Yeah, and, right? yeah. 
what, what I love about VA Con is that you know GalaxyCon is great, and you will find some good books there, and there are some great vendors. Well, VA Comic Con is comics, dude. But, but that's yeah. the thing: it's is VA Comic Con is for the fucking comic book nerds, yeah. right? Yeah. And collectible nerds. I, nothing against like, the cosplayers and the people out there doing all different levels of geekdom. Great, awesome, yeah. happy to fucking see it. Um, yeah. Not gatekeeping that shit at all. No, but it is great to have a, a more narrow focus with VA Con of it being the comic book yeah. centric. Yeah, kind and of it, audience. It's the vendors right. and and the the exhibitors are, are are kind of the highlight of of our show. Where it's while we you know we love the the other guests like GY and 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 a few of our cosplay friends. Like the heart and soul of of of, of our event that's been going on you know thirty six years. It was, I'm, I'm second generation in this, not my dad, but, uh, you know, a fellow older than myself. Mm. Um, we focus in on the stuff, which is a mm -hmm. little weird, but it's how we keep our costs down. And, and that's why I tip my hat to galaxy con, you know, they're, if they're going to spend the money to bring in William Shatner, fantastic. Like, yeah. I, I want to go to that show. I want to be there. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. but at the same time, I think that there's a lot of folks that if you could just not have all those guests and just keep a, keep a thing at 10 bucks, you can go yeah. and, and, you know, Pick up that weird, the, all those, you know, it's a few more bucks for the for that weird sword that you might find yep. or that, that yep. oddball print or something. Yeah. Right. Let's continue with the introduction. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we, we can ramble on about yeah. the no, awesome. No, obviously we're of, stoked yeah. to shit that you're here. Okay. Um, so and thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, let's, let's, let's get into <laughs> the, the, the subject matter and the other panelists. <laughs> of course, back, uh, it's been a few episodes that you haven't been able to hit up and I'm so happy to have uh, my partner in crime here yet again to talk mm. all things Thor, Love and Thunder. You just missed the dry jacks. I'm, I'm, I'm the love. He's definitely the thunder. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got low down Brown <laughs> MacGyver here. What's going on, everybody? Glad to be back. And it has been, uh, I feel like two episodes. I think it was uh, Stranger Things and Kenobi. Kenobi, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. Ready to talk about uh, Thor. Absolutely. This iteration of Thor is, uh, yeah, a lot to, uh, yeah. to discuss for sure. Yeah. Um, honestly, I enjoyed your iteration of Thor. At Halloween last year, <laughs> Damn. Yeah. it was like Thor is a pirate. I was yeah. uh, Captain yeah. Hook uh, Thor variant. <laughs> your uh, your host and the founder of GUI, Mike the Hobbit Bicket, Hello. also the uh, yeah the weird Captain fucking Thor, Captain yeah. Thor, which you wore the wig for maybe like like two seconds. <laughs> two seconds. That shit was uh, this was like cheap ass like. Oh, it was hot as fuck. It had Halloween storm wig, so yeah. it was also like itchy as shit. Oh yeah, mine, oh, dude, mine cost like six bucks. The you know the the brunette Casey yeah, Jones yeah. thing I had, and it was like fuck this. Yeah, Miserable. that that's why that's why I try to keep my Halloween costumes very limited yeah. these days because it, I'm just like I want to be comfortable the yeah. whole fucking yeah. night. Amy and I did a couple's costume where she was the TikTok Croc from um at, at slash uh, Crocodile Loki, mm -hmm. and I was uh, Captain Hook slash Thor. So there you go. Uh, very fun. Uh, that was a idea. Playing with the Stormbreaker. Uh, that I had for that costume actually currently. Yep. He's jealous. <laughs> He's jealous. That, He's that so was jealous. adorable too. But that is actually a good segue into talking about this. Oh, by the way, GYpodcast.com for all the stuff we do and all that shit. Rate, <laughs> review, subscribe. Yep. But the jealous Stormbreaker is a good example of kind of the challenges and, and successes that this movie had had as far as my personal opinion on it is that I feel like it was a great joke. Right. Um, that got carried a little too far. Yeah. And I think that's going to be the theme of most of the shit that we have a gripe about, where it was just like, cool, that could have worked one time, maybe twice. Yeah. But why are you bringing it back up 30 minutes later in the movie again? Yeah, agreed. Why? Where I felt like the flow got stopped almost sometimes because they were busy like fucking around with a callback joke that was it was too recent to call it back. Like, oh, yeah, it absolutely. happened 10 minutes ago. You don't oh. have to do it again. And the bad guy almost wins because Stormbreaker is jealous. Yeah, jealous. Yeah, yeah that was horrible. That I, I'm so, that was it was right. I, yeah, I'm sorry, but when when Thor has to tickle under Stormbreaker to be like, it's okay, baby, and he's literally twiddling his fingers under Stormbreaker's like hammer side back end. Maybe yeah. I don't know. No, it but was, no. It, it was gross. He, he was jiggling Stormbreaker's balls. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm. Yeah. Well, one thing that had never been discussed in any previous iterations of uh, the, I, I think even the comics, but the movies for sure, is that these hammers, uh, Mjolnir or Stormbreaker, they are not sentient. Mm -mm. They are not. They aren't like aware and have personalities on their own. They're not like Doctor Strange's cloak in the no, MCU, where no. it's like it's got its own personality. Where it makes sense. And, yeah, where it makes you know. sense. Yeah. So the yeah, idea this this was incorporated it was not discussed or part of the character of these of these weapons beforehand. So it was a little bit jarring when I will even give it the one joke of 
Stormbreaker slowly moving into frame <laughs> that once. That was funny as shit. But that but and that was also just mainly the shot too. That that yeah. wasn't even the fact of like, oh, my weapon is jealous of my ex weapon. Yeah. It's more so of just a shot of like, oh hey, you're there. But then okay. bringing it into him having that conversation, it was like, oh no, we're just friends and it, it being like a conversation Wait, of a jealous yeah. girlfriend and your ex showed up to the party was a little bit much mm -hmm. Absolutely. after a while. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that yeah. was kind of the common theme throughout this is that it's just jokes that instead of having the ebbs and flow of a comedy where you have those serious moments and those uh, those like sweet or, or whimsical moments, it was just like joke, 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 and a lot of callbacks and a lot of yeah. just beating a joke to death. Well, and that's where we were talking about like even doing the slight comparison to Ragnarok, where Ragnarok had just the right amount of jokes like um please get help was mentioned twice it wasn't brought up multiple times in the last 30 minutes of the movie mm -hmm. so many of these jokes were and it, honestly this movie probably could have been even like 30 minutes shorter if yeah. you cut out a lot of the the nonsense that wasn't would, needed and then it would have been just like oh this is too short we would have had a sony property like venom and carnage which i, I enjoy but also they could have been a little bit longer right the time. so there could have been more meat you could to tell it. where they cut it cut yeah the fuck out of the movie what what you what we didn't get that we got in Ragnarok was, uh, a, I don't think we got enough villain screen time mm. because that was really the seriousness that kind of fed into the the breaking up the lightness of most of the story involving Thor and Loki. Right. And you know, I mean, especially when you get to fucking Jeff Goldblum, that was just the whole thing that was amazing. <laughs> and, the, and the arena fight with Hulk, all that shit was awesome. Yeah. But it really like you know even Ragnarok had its problem, and I brought this up way back, listeners. If you go back and listen to our Ragnarok episode. They did not give any weight to Odin's death. So they there was already right. signs. There was already signs that like if he doesn't have anybody like I know I know Faye gives people like a lot of a lot of rope, but like there should have been some tugging, I feel like, in yeah. Love and Thunder. You right. Know? It's kinda like Kurt Sutter. Same thing. You need to That's yeah, true. Yeah, bring him in. Yeah. Well, I mean, but even to bring up Odin's death where it was just like, how far are you gonna push Matt Damon, the other Hemsworth, and Sam oh, O'Neill do, so doing the much. doing the playwright stuff. Too much, too much. But at the initial wait for Odin, I feel that's like another issue that this movie has is it's dealing with a lot heavier issues than I mean, Odin's death is is oh, yeah, serious. Yeah. And it, it was played as a joke to a degree. There was only one moment of any kind of like seriousness taken about it. Yeah. And even something as serious as cancer. Um and fortunately, <sighs> fortunately, they yeah. got, walked yeah. right up to the line of where they didn't make a cancer joke, but they walked right up to it and then decided to back off. Yeah. Thankfully, that that toe that been, was that toe was slipping was almost slipping across almost that, line. that line. Yeah, and, it ooh, was. That's but they're like, oh no, I don't, I don't have cancer. Ha 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 ha. Was a weird way to play that. I understand it not. What I understand that's something deeply personal that a person is challenged with. And like, absolutely. When is the right time to have that conversation with the people you care about? And stuff? that's, but that's really intense, dramatic shit. The fact that it was all the, everything around it was jokes. Yeah. Uh, and there yeah. was like two seconds of seriousness well, when dealing with something so fucking I didn't, serious. I, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel that throughout the movie. I didn't feel like, the weight of her dying right. as much I as they should have been. I didn't feel it. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. fucking... Well, two things. that That's, again, because this was supposed to be our big story about the mighty Thor, which was Jane Foster becoming Thor, mm -hmm. uh, which I will give props to where they, they constantly called her Thor. They weren't trying to say she Thor or, like, build to something. They just went... I think there was Thor. even a note where they said like Lady Thor and they're like, no, just Thor. I think right. they even pointed yeah, that exactly. out. Exactly. But even the one part where she finally does tell Thor that she has cancer and you were like, and like you mentioned, and she's like, no, 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 I don't. I'm just kidding. Uh -huh, no. What a, what a fun joke. All it would have changed was you know one line to say. joke about that. Yeah. One line should have just been changed to be like, no, I shouldn't have said that. That's all they or had something. to change yeah. it to, yeah. What, yeah. to keep it. You know when not's a good time to talk about the fact that I have cancer on the way to the fucking shadow realm. That is not the opportune <laughs> right. time to talk about my issues and you know my health issues. Oh, the shadow realm was such a cool concept of using black and white and color. Oh, I love and that. Then all but the color was, just... was coming from uh, the weapons, like yep. the electricity yes. and, the, and yes. the thunderbolt and stuff. I, and I enjoyed that. I just I didn't pick up on that. They were traveling. But I, too. I feel like right. they built that up too much in the trailer, where I thought that was going to be a much bigger. I thought that was the climax 
point of and it was yeah like, it wasn't yeah. very big so i feel like whenever they panned out you, you just, it looked like there was like almost cartoonish where they were just like big bodies on oh, a tiny well, rock like like the, like they were on the on, on a small moon especially when all, they, so, all yeah. the, the shadow monsters came out it was like they just engulfed and the entire they didn't even utilize the smallness of the planet in the battle like it could have been so easy for thor to throw the hammer and it go around the entire planet yeah. and it gore in the back of the head exactly I mean, that, yeah that shit was like Ready to go. That would have been a great joke. That would have like, been great. That would have been hilarious. Yeah. Well, yeah. so you're saying there should have been less time of the villain being shown if he did that. <laughs> well, no, because I want. <laughs> I or want... no, even do where he throws it and then he tries to call it back and it comes back the wrong way and he's like, no. And so he's having to judge how far it goes before now, he calls see, it back for it to wrap around the that, right way. That would have been better. Would be... That would have been better. I just wish with Gore the way like the movie started with him and show what he sacrificed. That beginning of the movie had weight. And then him finding out there is no paradise. It was all lies. To me, that had so much weight in, the, in that scene. And to not give any of his story up to the point, really, with, with him, where he comes to New Asgard. And, that's I mean, that's the next time you see him. Yeah. And, like, wait a minute. Hold on. He's been killing gods. Can we not, like, get some of that? Like, Well, and that, that's something I wanted to, to bring up as well is that the usage of, I mean, we're talking about, like, the upper tier gods of uh, the Marvel Universe at this point. We're talking about, like, Eternity yeah. and Infinity. And, like, you see all the statues of others. What, the, the Living Tribunal is in there? Mm -hmm. uh, in that yeah. in that, that hall. Yeah, yeah the giant um, hall, yeah. And... I'm I'm curious. I, that is something that I have some limited knowledge of. Is like the upper tier gods of Marvel, but uh, like Brett, I don't know if you have insights into Eternity. I know I'm pretty sure Eternity's never been a little girl. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. it's, yeah. yeah. It, there's <laughs> it with all the different like like levels of Marvel universe. There there's different higher beings. You know, sure, yeah, yeah. I think what the Celestials are like way up there, and then but yeah, not as far as like Eternity and yeah, Infinity, no, they're, they're, yeah, they're way they're like the super gods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. um, well, yeah, then there's but, like he above all or something that I think is even higher than them, or I don't know. But it's, oh. yeah, there's so many l levels and layers. But yeah, th th it's that's the trick is. It's almost like a video game with with Gore the God Slayer that you know. Oh, first first you gotta wipe out those the like tiny gods, and you gotta go up to the medium gods, and then you know eventually you wind up with at Zeus. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, I yeah. Guess. And Wait. even Zeus is like he he's like I'm a list motherfucker, and Thor's like, there's like bigger there's. There's ones like way yeah, higher than yeah. His ass. Zeus ain't uh, which Zeus isn't shit in this movie. <laughs> no, I didn't. Zeus sounds like a fucking Super Mario character in this movie. But he's uh, the uh, accent. He, he was supposed that, to go. I think he was going for Mediterranean. I'm pretty yeah, sure that's what he yeah. was going for. But no, he, Zeus he, is a Greek guy. He, right? he, so, he was all about I got my thunderbolt. Hey, it was it, yeah, it was like a Family Guy you, episode. You should know that it's a called a thunderbolt. Uh, yeah, yeah, like it was fucking. It was so, bad. Yeah, it, bad. that's where it, it was. Around that time in the movie that um, I started looking at it like, is this a parody Thor movie? Because it felt like it was hitting those same beats. It's like right after the Wayans brothers sold the scary movie property to uh, the the producers of like Airplane and shit. And they started making those uh, epic movie and superhero oh, movie yeah, yeah, and yeah. date movie and all those really bad parodies. Mm -hmm. There was aspects of that that I felt were in Thor Love and Thunder where it was just this over the topitude that they were doing that was beyond it being funny. It was just almost like making fun of the concept without actually having a joke behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I even feel like Thor's new outfit was just sort of like, really? Uh, are you talking I'm, about his very first one you see? The, I'm talking about that yeah, like blue and gold blue. or yeah. oh, like the bright yeah. one that he had most of the movie. Oh, yeah, like that, I'm just, it was atrocious. I, I can't even think the, of, I'm going to a steel and, panther, panther and I don't know concert, if someone like uh, Brett outfit. can hey, confirm this. I can't hole. think of an outfit where that was happened other than like, maybe like a random, like story, like a one shot of I something. I don't know maybe. if that's from, it's a very nineties looking thing. If, if true, yeah, if, if it was true, you know, every character changed their outfit every third issue in the nineties. Yeah, so that fair, yeah, that's yeah. fair enough yeah. on that. Yeah, it, it's it's nothing. It 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 didn't strike me as an iconic outfit. Right. No, it, it just it really just didn't feel like it fit. Yeah, and and I don't know why they felt the the reason to go this route with how they pretty much the entire the entire movie. There were four different times where you had Korg tell me, "Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about that." As soon as something changed. Now let me tell you about this. I'm like, sh shut the fuck up. I don't know. I have no problem with there being like a kind of a, a narrator. 
Yes. Uh, that, well, what's they start the, what's, and it's the, it's same the story. untrustworthy narrator, I guess, is uh, was what Korg's character would be, is that he's telling a story and then he has to correct what happens because something else happens on screen kind of thing. But it was uh, a joke that I think went too long. Oh, it went too he long. He did it like um, three times. Yeah. He corrected himself three times throughout the goddamn movie. Well, I think the, yeah. the biggest challenge overall and what a lot of these points that we're making comes to is that like this movie... Uh, lacked the heart that Ragnarok had is that you mm-hmm. know they it set up what this movie was supposed to be about, which was Thor finding himself, figuring out what he was supposed to be doing, which Absolutely. they set up at the end of fucking Endgame. But they made a where, joke right. of it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and they made a joke of it. It became a parody of that. Uh, all these characters had directions for their characters, um, but no, if they reached fruition, it was almost accidentally. Like th- th- you didn't yeah. feel like there was any kind of character arc happening with any of these characters. Well, and like I was. Again, specific to Thor, like I was mentioning before the episode was, yeah, he. It, it's hard to talk to an ex. It's hard to, you know, express yourself to some degree. But they really, like, it made him really sound like a bumbling fool at times mm. when he shouldn't be at this time. He should, after the, you know, after Endgame and what happened with Infinity War and stuff, he should know what the fuck to say. And it just may be a little, maybe slight stutter when it comes to Jane Foster, but not like, uh, the, the, uh, how do you like my hammer? And stop you that, in your track stuff. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, it shouldn't be like that anymore. No, because they did make, they made a point to show that he had taken time to find himself, but it also showed, like, again, there was no weight with his development with that. They made the entire time of him with Guardians a joke. Yep. Where he, yeah. And, and that was very, dis, that was disheartening. It was, because like, yeah. like you said, at the end of Endgame, it was like, this is, the, this is there should have been How more. Yeah, Peter Quill both is like relieved when he leaves, but in that battle, the adult where Thor is just like profligating from atop a rock, uh, Quill is reciting the shit that he's saying, but with like a grin on his face, like he's oh, he's even like oh, here we go, like he's excited yeah. that it's Thor time, and that's totally opposite to every other thing that we see him playing against Thor. Like he's yeah, he's intimidated by thor he's intimidated by like the way well, people like thor but like even people don't like thor anymore i don't know like in a very when they when they part ways it seemed like how is peter quill coming off as the adult yeah that was, right that i mean was, he grows you know, up in guardians of the galaxy but in comparison to the way it, it was thor was way like, yeah it should it should have been way more of like the quote-unquote mature one when it came down to it mm-hmm. you know for a lot of stuff so i mean it's i, I felt I felt like they did their best to just write the Guardians right out of this movie. Yeah. It was somehow like, you know. There was no they, time spent. Yeah, they, they were handed, you know, he was like, okay, I've got this story to tell. And they're like, well, how are you going to deal with, with the fact that Thor is running around with the Guardians right now? And they're like, oh, that's easy. Yeah, we'll have him roll out in the first five minutes. We'll do away with that. It was like, it was, they swept the Guardians under the rug so quickly in this movie. I, I yeah. thought it was, you know. And I was kind of looking forward to the Thor going around the cosmos, kicking ass with the Guardians. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Even having them part of the journey to a certain extent, they have to dip for one reason or another. That's fine. But yeah, you, like you said, five minutes in, mm-hmm. uh, you see them for two seconds. Half of them didn't have a fucking speaking part. Do you remember Rocket saying anything at any point? He did. He did. He did. He's like, you Bare- said they were they were uh, they were peaceful or something like that. Yeah, but like, that's yeah, like that was it. it. That was it. And yeah. you get like two IM Groots. That's about it. Like yeah. uh, Drax, uh, Mantis. None, none of them really have any. Drax has said we're all gonna we're all die or something like that. That like there was everyone had yeah. like one fucking line yeah. except for Peter. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> and you could have taken half the jokes and made that the whole Guardians of the Galaxy like build in. In the beginning, that whole like take out a half an hour of jokes that could have been thirty minutes of showing what was going on with the Guardians. That would have made way more sense if all the comedy yeah. was an elongated scene of the the Guardians and the departure. That would have been, it would have been a totally yeah, a different way film, better man. build up to that opening. Yeah. yeah. Also, in the opening where it's got Thor, it well a. I thought that they weren't going to do this from the trailers, and they fully fucking did, where they just sped right past him losing weight. Um, they, well, no, you showed him doing fucking, well, like, for two you know, seconds. Some, some battle yeah, ropes. I mean, they, but they were like, oh, by the way, lost weight. Anyway, and then just moved on with yeah, it. Again, um, they, they rushed through that, too. Yeah, <laughs> but when it gets to Thor, you know, taking off his, his fucking retirement cloak uh, and taking out his man bun and uh, revealing he has guns again and standing atop the rock to, like, talk to the people that he's going to save and stuff, and he's, he's profligating, he's self-aggrandizing 
for fucking days. It was like, I, Thor, God of Thunder, blah, blah, blah. I will save you, and I don't need Breaker to Breaker of chains. Break, and, yeah, this you know, ends here like, look, and now. This, me, yeah. I, I am so humble. Look at how humble I am and doing all this shit. It basically erases all the growth that this character has had through the other movies, is that he had to deal with depression and realize, and failure and, oh, yeah. and coming coming, yeah. coming yep. to terms with that. Yeah. And also, even in the first yeah. Thor movie, he had to... He at the start of that was self aggrandizing and pompous. And they referenced that. And it, he and referenced he thanked Jane for helping him with that, but it's like you're doing the same you're shit. Still doing yeah. It. And there was no transition. <laughs> like I understand people backsliding, but you didn't show backsliding. You just pretended like this was the next step in his arc. And no, there, he fully became the Thor from the beginning of the first movie. Can we just, can we just say like I, I really wanted also an elongated Guardian scene because I wanted him in that costume more. Cause that was rad. The, oh, the Ravager outfit. Oh, that yes. was fucking bad. That was when he, like you said, when he decloaks and he's like, "Oh fuck yeah!" Then it's way better than what he he's, had the rest of the movie. He's got a G, uh, like a leather vest with a back patch on it. So yeah. awesome, dude. Yes, <laughs> the, the studs. Studs. studs it's, yeah. a, it's the studs on there. That but was see, awesome. But that goes into yeah, we totally should have had a thirty-minute opener of him with Guardians. Because at least if he was being all grandeur about it, at least they could have showed the progression of coming back to having confidence again. After the Which failures, it didn't, and, it didn't seem like that, right? It didn't no. seem like confidence. It seemed like just oh, I, 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 I'm meditating under a tree no. for a moment. Oh, and I got to go kick some ass. Yeah, it just seemed like yeah. Ubers. Oh, That's all it was. Like yeah. I'm just this cocky piece of shit again. After yeah, all the shit. Because even yeah. and they even show his, his story, like you know, and his watch his brother die again, and again, and again. Cork, you know, the Cork storytelling basically made it yeah. go all the trauma he had been through. Right. Oh, his, oh, his, his pl trauma. His planet blew up, and his people had to go here. Yeah. And blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. What the fuck. <laughs> Now, I, I do want to end on like a positive before we yeah, go to yeah, break yeah. because yeah. like we are talking a lot about the negatives of this movie and for good reason. I mean, I, I think it's completely fair to approach this uh, like honestly that we did. It did feel a little bit uh, disjointed uh, that it, it lacked like a through line that really that like, carried this movie. It was a lot of yuck yucks. Um, yeah. that just for me didn't really it's disheartening. A lot of land. Yeah, it was it's really disheartening, disheartening. Yeah. especially as strong as Taika Waititi's like um, History, not just in Marvel, but no, in period across yeah, the, across the board. Absolutely, doing the shadows. I mean, Jojo Rabbit. I Our mean, flag was... means death. Oh yeah, my god, I love that. I, I loved, loved it. it. One huge fan of that one. But, but I get it. Back to like right. Boy and uh, Hunt for the Wilder People and shit. Like his early stuff. He's an incredible filmmaker, and mm -hmm. he's yeah. historically been really good about wrapping like drama and 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 tr and trauma and tragedy into a comedic blanket and having a decent balance but that's a warm two. fuzzy feeling yeah yeah right. uh, it, it, i mean all... even with our flag means death as wacky as that shit was it was dealing with like some really were... genuine oh there was some heartfelt and, shit and heartfelt happening shit in there yeah so for he's sure. very capable of this mm -hmm. and so yeah that is it is kind of like a little crushing that this feels i i hate to say it a little phoned in him doing another thor movie so him doing another marvel movie even though I love his other uh, films outside of the MCU, I was kind of just focused going, okay, well, he he had a fucking smash bang hit with his first MCU film, right? So I was like, okay, I didn't want the same thing. I wanted more. I wanted it, I wanted him to be more of him. Like I wanted mm -hmm. it to be better. I was just about going in thing. Okay, he was probably reserved in this as far as the storytelling and how he was going to portray these these hard things that Thor that we all were left with Thor having to deal with. Yeah. And that's what I was expecting going into this, obviously with 80s fucking color and all that stuff cuz I mean, well, fucking, yeah. you know. And I mean cuz Ragnarok was way more colorful. He really did focus on the uh all the cosmic aspects of Thor that we Absolutely, really didn't get yeah. outside of Asgard in the fir in the first two films. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. he really made the world beautiful. And that was still there, but there was so much lacking that was in the first film. I was like, dude, why? I, w I wanted it to be amplified. All the awesomeness that was Ragnarok, I thought we were going to get more of yeah. in this yeah. film. Well, it goes with uh, a lot of the interviews and some of the early behind the scenes that they were showing before the movie was actually released was, they. I mean, they talked about how th there was so much off-the-cuff stuff happening because... Well, part of it worked for Ragnarok, but it was like that's all they tried to do for Love and Thunder was, well, we kind of have a script, but let's just sort of see how we play yeah. off each other. You know, it was, eh. Yeah, no, it's, Thor's not ad lib, man. Yeah. yeah. You guys have touched on on something that, that comes so close to expecting greatness out of this director at every turn, mm -hmm. that this that this was a, a little bit of a drop. I mean, that, like you, you mentioned Jojo Rabbit, you know, this director made us, you know, 
kind of laugh and be sympathetic and everything about like Hitler as a <laughs> right? comedic character. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that's like true. he he took the most challenging subject ever and crushed and, it. And yeah, and he and he made a, a compassionate film. That this film feels a lot to me like the first Avengers movie, where like the first Avengers movie I thought was fabulous, and so then. Like they were like, okay, Whedon, you have as much budget as you want, as many stuff as you want, and he's like, great, okay, I want twice as many heroes, fifty percent as many villains. It's got to be thirty minutes longer, yeah, and we get it has to now. be twice. <laughs> yeah, know, everything has to be more explodey, and we need yeah. you know bigger soundtrack. And it's and I think that 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 in this case, everything was fifty percent bigger than Ragnarok, and I and it just took away from the film. Like mm-hmm. I, I think yeah. that's a pretty yeah. pretty fair comparison, uh Avengers one and, and two. Yeah. We we talked about that on because Ultron was like our fourth or fifth episode. Yeah, that that, episode. Yeah, that came like that. out yeah. like right after we started yeah. as a podcast. So okay. and I, I think that yeah. might have been our first Marvel property it that was. we that yeah. we actually yep. reviewed. It was. So. It was. And yeah, exactly. We were like it was too muddled in its own stew and yeah, even it when it came out, itself, we still had a little bit of that like phantom menace like it's so good because i can't accept it being bad kind of energy to that episode because yeah. it was whedon and the first avengers was so good it was so early in the mcu that the idea of like it being bad was just impossible in our minds right so that i remember that episode us kind of like talking it out that by the end of the episode it was almost like oh no it might not be that good like that, yeah. That, yeah. 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 Tough. Arrived at that during the episode, and yeah, to piggy piggyback exactly what you said, and kind of read what I said earlier is like I didn't want more of the action of Ragnarok. I wanted more of the heart that, yeah, he is mm-hmm. that that yeah. he is capable of, and right. we've seen him do that. And you, you, you know, it, you go circling back to Jojo Rabbit, like we could have gotten so much more of everything we loved from Ragnarok and not just making it a fucking slap dick like doo, 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 Benny Hill playing in the fucking background. Mm-hmm. Well, like, you've you know, got, you've yeah. got movies like uh, Deadpool and the Birds of Prey movie and stuff where there's this moment where everybody stops, the, everything in the movie completely stops so the main person can talk and do, like, a silly thing, right? Mm-hmm. And right. Yeah. And that was so much of Love and Thunder. Everything stopped whenever there was a moment for there to be a comedic beat. Mm-hmm. Um, the pacing of this movie suffered dramatically because of yeah, that. Yeah, it became a hindrance yeah. instead of something that it yeah. just was, was a, a nicety to I, have. I, I was just going to agree with that because it's, bro, you just showed up and you're talking. Here. We got shadow yeah. monsters. You're talking to your ex. Can yeah. you fucking kill the shadow monsters, yeah, yeah, please? Right. Yeah. Yeah. They took our fucking children while you're talking to your ex. How about that? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you know, let, let's take the break. We, we are right at the break point. So when we come back, we'll talk about our sponsors, what we're drinking and such, and uh, get into some of the positives as well as more conversation about like the plot of this movie um movie. Yeah. so yeah. uh we'll be back in just sure mm-hmm. coming straight from the mouths of madness i'm lowdown i'm fu hunter do you love horror we fucking do so this is a podcast dedicated to all things in cinematic horror we're talking movies television composers special effects artists we're gonna fucking cover it so if you love horror embrace the madness My name is Amy Bogard. And I'm Mike the Hobbit. And we are the hosts of Deeply Upsetting, where we use our expertise to answer your most upsetting hypothetical quandaries, such as what non-wigged animal deserves wings? And what body part deserves a secret mouth? Which cryptid is the worst roommate? These questions and more that plague you will be answered on Deeply Upsetting, available anywhere you get your podcasts and at GUIPodcast.com. In a world of blockbuster movies, there is another dimension. The dimension of schlock cinema. Join us at Beautiful Disasters on a journey into the fringe territory of B-movie abandon. We review the flicks that are forgotten or underappreciated to give them a proper place in the annals of celluloid history. I'm the Groots. F you, Hunter. Your guides at Beautiful Disasters. Come along with us for a fun ride. May May the the schlock be with with you. In a world with too many reboots and remakes, two men will stop at nothing to make it even worse. Join Mike the Hobbit and Tondi as they play by their own rules while pitching new takes on some of your favorite and least favorite films and TV shows. What podcast would dare to bring this upon the world? This is Smack My Pitch Up. Hey guys, Scotty P here with Smash. On your left, 
and we are the Geek Fathers. That's right, bringing all the trials and tribulations of being a geeky parent. So welcome to our world. And as always, join us or cry. We're back for all things Thor, Love and Thunder on this episode of Geeks Under the Influence. Before we continue on, let's talk about our sponsors a little bit. Of course, first off, the, I guess, uh, small business butcher uh, of the world, Amazon.com <laughs> has been our sponsor for years. <laughs> they took over Walmart's mantle. They did. It used to be Walmart, and then Amazon's like, hold my beer. Yeah. Uh, that's right. very affordably priced. We have be the delivered to your door. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're not just books anymore, motherfucker. I think it's their, <laughs> is their tagline. Basically, yeah. Uh, if, if you want to uh, make your local comic book store out, go out of business, then uh, order comic books through Amazon.com. If you don't want to do that, buy your comic books locally. But all, all the uh, movies and stuff that you want to purchase from the MCU, all the, all the props that you may not be able to get locally, yeah, sure, why not? Mm -hmm. Along with your toilet paper and your toiletries and stuff that isn't going to ruin a local business. So, yes. um, fuck Jeff, Bezo Jeff Bezos. Uh, Amazon kind of sucks, but we all use it to a degree. If you got to make sure you do it through the link at GUIpodcast.com. That way we get some of the money and they don't. Uh, so it's our way of saying fuck the man while also depending on the man for money. Um, mm. yeah, the, the, the American dream right mm. there. Basically. <laughs> yeah. It's just a mirror. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's an ugly, <laughs> ugly, ugly mirror. Yeesh, <laughs> yeesh. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll, you'll find the link in our link section at GUIPodcast.com. Uh, yeah, all you have to do is click through it, and then whatever you buy, we get credit. So check that out. A better way to support the show, of course, yes. is by buying our merch. We've got so yes. much merch, all sorts of cool shit available. Uh, GUIPodcast.com slash store. Uh, that'll send you to our Tee Public store. Uh, where we've got designs, over 40 designs. We've got... Oh, yeah, what are we actually up to? Uh, it's, it's like 45 or 46 designs. In, I think it's the beginning of September is when we release the uh, Halloween designs. We'll be over 50 once those get yeah. released. They've got buttons, stickers, baby onesies, pillows. Yes. I be. wasn't going to say shit, right. but if you want to bring it um, up... But they do have coffee mugs and uh, and travel containers. Notebooks. And you can get fucking notebooks. 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 All, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big, we, we've got them in the studio with big fucking banners that you can get. Yeah, and this yeah. stuff. Is this the biggest? That's not the, even the biggest. No, that is, say, it's not the biggest. That's yeah. the second biggest, and it's yeah. almost the size of the wall. I know. It's, yeah. awesome. it's fucking huge. I think that's so. the size I got. So if you yeah. want to hang a big so. live, laugh, love human centipede design on your wall uh, oh, to really worry oh, oh, your roommates, oh, oh. then you yeah. can find that. See, I got that on a mug. GUIpodcast.com. <laughs> nice. Mugs, honestly, a lot of our designs are perfect for like a weird coffee mug. Yeah, because it's like I just want to hand, hand somebody coffee and then just wait, wait for it. Just wait for wait it. Wait for, for it to click. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, all, all the designs, yeah, are so many different choices from all the different shows on the network. And uh, yeah, um, take your pick. Take your pick on what merch you want it on. And uh, it helps us out a lot. It helps us with booze costs and uh, and storage fees and all the equipment, equipment yes. stuff. Yeah, this is not a free uh, thing that we do here. So nope. help us out oh, no. by uh, buying cool shit for yourself and your friends at uipodcast.com slash store. That's our our advertising for good this job. Episode. Yay! Woo! Good Yay. job. Got to feed the beast. Damn now right. on to uh, feeding the stomach um with booze is our next little segment here we're talking about the real fuel that that lights our fire here on this uh on this show we're talking about what we're drinking hey we're fucking drinking we're getting drunk you want to know well here you go hey we're drinking Wee! we're getting drunk Wee! Wee! Shadow yeah. Nine is definitely thematically appropriate, and it is also definitely East Coast local. This is a brewery that started out in Charlottesville, and I think it's in Crozet now, uh, but it's only- It's got uh, a Richmond spot, too. It's got a Richmond spot as well. Yeah, that opened yeah. up, what, like, two years ago? I right think? before COVID. Yeah, right before COVID. Yeah. Great spot. Great uh, like rooftop deck area in the, the Richmond location. Uh, we're talking about Star Hill Brewery's The Love, thematically. Um, mm. th his child, apparently, is now, instead of eternity, is a little little kid named Love. Yeah, I guess was the yeah. Thing I, don't, I don't know. Eternity turned into love. I, I, I guess is the. I don't. I, don't, I, don't you know. I have my theories on that. I was telling you about. I that. know. I, I know, got my theories, but it's just the way it ended. It was just. I know it was. I've heard a couple theories, but uh, this is Star Hill Brewery. It's been around for ages. I remember going to see uh, shows at the Star Hill Brewery in Charlottesville back when I was in fucking high school. So this yeah. has been around well before was, the brewery. It was rush. One of yeah. the originals, like legend. You know, oh yeah, yeah. You're right. Virginia breweries. Uh, they're pretty popular. This is a very approachable, um, sessionable 
wheat beer. Doesn't even uh, taste like a wheat beer. Yeah, it's it doesn't have a heavy wheat flavor. That's what I mean is that it's like it's very light. It's five point one percent ABV. I'd say I I could stand have it have a little bit more flavor note to it, but as far as a like a poolside beer, I, I was about to say this I th- the, this yeah. would be a summertime. Well, I guess it just comes with the expectation is that like a wheat beer. I've had heavy weeded wheat beers and I've had lighter weeded, and this is definitely on the lighter side. This is uh yeah, as it says, also crisp, refreshing, and vibrant. So mm. it's good, yeah. but yeah, it's it's not your typical wheat beer. No, it doesn't have so. a heavy wheat uh, element to it. So if you're looking for a wheat beer, I'm drinking it. Um, like the Bells, for example, that'd be a little bit more of a heavy wheat flavor. Uh, this is definitely a crisp, refreshing summertime beverage choice for sure. Absolutely. So especially if you're not a big wheat beer fan, this would be one that you would be more likely to enjoy. Yeah. You know, speaking of like... Uh, getting wasted like there are elements in thor and love and thunder this is me trying to pull it back in mm-hmm. of it's Good seeming job. like the writer's room being like hey what if we did this what if there were two supersized screaming goats and they're like how do we do that i don't know like a gift and then we could do like a up oh, you, you said okay you can't give them back now and they're like okay it's in it's in this and well they were all right unfortunately i found them funny at f- First. At first, yeah. But it, unfortunately, it did follow the formula that even though I, I know we said we were trying to stay positive the second half here mm. of, of where, okay, we get it. They're screaming goats. They serve their purpose. Just get it done. You know, Just, yeah, you're right. <sighs> shit. Yeah. Anyway, at first it was funny. And then there was one time at the end when it was funny when they landed. Oh, in, with, in the when they more so crashed. Yeah, that yeah. was funny. That was pretty funny. But yeah. Six times in between. Fuck off. Yeah. Right. Now I will pull it back on a on a positive note. We we just need to go ahead hard turn into. Can we talk about Christian Bale? Yes, please. Can yes. we talk about Christian Bale? Yes, because that was the best part of the fucking movie. Nobody told him this was a slapsticky movie. Apparently uh, not. Yeah, <laughs> Th- I mean, thankfully, thankfully, no right. one said, "Hey, we're going to be making a lot of jokes." So, like, I wouldn't be surprised if he showed up and his teeth were already chiseled into fangs, and they're like, "Whoa, oh, oh. okay." He's like, "I just thought it'd be good for my character," and they're like, oh, "Yeah." Cool. Sure, great. I love the dedication, man. Dedication, right. Man. Well, I mean, we'll let Christian Bale when it comes to dedication at a, at a role, anyways. Yeah. I mean, that dude like has gone through God, more we, body changes do, than is that, I just had to take the caps off my teeth from when I chiseled them trying to play the shark in forty seven meters down. Basically, like, what? yes, what exactly. The fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't I, get the part. I, I didn't. Mm-hmm. I spent the first five minutes just desperately wanting to give him like some Jergens. Like he he looks so dry, and so dry. Oh, oh yeah, it, dude. Oh, God, what? I just oh. wanted to be like here, like anything. Yeah, like it was it was painful to watch uh, on the movie screen. Somebody so dry and cracked. Absolutely, but you between that which worked, but the way that man portrayed the emotions of just like from the sadness to the slight hopefulness and to just the rage be, to the rage of just like you just dashed all my literally I all lost my prayers my daughter all my prayers yeah. have just been like, fucked yeah like that guy the facial expressions he pulls off best bottom I mean, down I, gotta, I mean i think out of all the rehashed over and over again jokes throughout the film one of the funniest things when he ripped the head off the monster and threw it at the kids that shit was had me rolling, yeah, that, dude. That, was that shit good. had me rolling. Well, he liked it a moment ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to like point out though that just having a sword doesn't make you good at killing literal gods. Like they had, uh, they showed a god that looked like something straight out of Shadow of the Colossus. Mm-hmm. Uh, that it was like friendliest god you'll ever meet, but he was also a fucking behemoth. Here's like powder. Uh, showing up <laughs> demonic powder demonic powder with a sword being like I got this bitch like there was nothing that suggested that this single father uh, had any combat experience whatsoever or any usefulness with a sword he found a sword in an oasis with like oh the sword found him oh the sword found him sword I'm found sorry him. the sword yes. found him in an oasis around the most fucking cartoonish gods I've ever seen in my entire life and yeah. it was just like suddenly he knew how to wield this thing like well, they did say that the sword gave you the power, so that's how he that that was yeah. there that was their little line. We always talk about all they got to do is one little line. Well, it doesn't always work to your favor. Their their True. color palette is basically a Masters of the Universe cartoon in the first place. <laughs> True, and he gets a magic yeah. sword that gives him the power. The fact that he at no point said I have the power is fucking bullshit. I agree. <laughs> I can agree. I can get behind that. Yep. Even if he breathlessly said it, not in the I have the power, which I hope he did, but just like. 
I have the power, Thor, would be great. Yeah. That's, that's all yeah. I would need. Wait, no, wait, say, say that again. I, I, wait. Christian Bale, machinist, that's- have the power. <laughs> he's not from fuck, he doesn't have Cockney, he's from Wales. Right. He's space Cockney. Uh, Sp- no. No, no. Um, I apologize to all of our European and English uh, listeners. Um, if they're if they're from the UK, they th- we're Americans. They think we're full of shit already. That's so, okay. Like, fair. They think we're goddamn morons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <be real. laughs> so but, back to Thor: but, Love and so, Thunder. <laughs> uh, I, but I do understand what you're saying as far as like he is taking down like, even though they're the lesser gods, he's also taking down some pretty big hitters on yeah. his way to Zeus. Now, we talked about this before the episode. Why, like, they couldn't make him look imposing to match the power that the sword gave him. That's why they also mm-hmm. made it more of that uh, mystical, magical realm. Yeah. Because Christian Bale had just d- got done filming something that he had to lose, he had to be slim for. And literally, he, and he said in an interview, is like, I don't know, in, f- in like four or five weeks, we were flying over to start filming this. So I had no time to. Do what I do. Well, Gore's and not put right. on the muscle. Gore's not like a beefcake, and he's a little bit more like. I mean, he's athletically pretty, he's pretty muscle. Fucking big, yeah. dude. He's he's just uh, he's not no, tiny. not that big. But but again, he's impose, He's not. He's big enough to be in uh, something that you could see actually fighting Thor, and be imposing. He's got a swimmer's bod. Well, he's not Michael Phelps. Yeah, right. Michael <laughs> Phelps as Gore the God Butcher. Like, I feel like Christian Bale with American good. Psycho. Uh, physique would have been more if, bo- like if they beefed him up. Just I, I mean. It, it would be a, a minor amount, but again, more of it does rely on the power of the sword. Yeah, that, it, that's where it comes from. I mean, they did the MCU thing where they changed it because, like, the scarring and stuff was definitely not on Gore in mm-hmm. the comics. Now, does anybody know that? But like, the history he's way of the more sword? alien looking. I, in the... I know that it came from. Uh, this was a, wasn't this the same sword that was used to kill uh, kill the celestial that became nowhere or. Was it? I I want to say that's I want to say I'm, that's possible, but I believe one of the big possible crossovers is it also originated from the creature or the the god or, or somebody who created the symbiotes. For, oh, uh, yeah, the, for the, spi- the, the from symbiote spider. god or something has right. something to do with it as well. I think that really? yes. might have been the god that uh, is dead in the oasis. Now, uh, yep. It's not technically called like the symbiote god in this mm-hmm context but but that's who it should have been like technically that that god did not die he gave the sword to gore because of gore going off about you know he it was like one of those like i'm gonna walk the universe now because the gods didn't listen he pulled a sam jackson from pulp fiction he watched a couple episodes of Kung no, Fu the series and walked the earth. Well, yes, he he. Did. <laughs> well, that's in the comics. Yes, that's technically okay, what cool. happened. Is that he was basically like Kung Fu, but he was like I gotta the go on a walk about Fu, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, he was given the sword by the we'll say the symbiote god because again, I can't. I'm bad well, with so the name. I'm teasing, but, yeah. but Thor literally did exactly that. Like yes. he's like, fucking oh, yeah. peace. I gotta go oh. explore the universe. I I. Yeah. Am, and, and abandon the people that he was supposed to be protecting. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear a fucking muumu and plant my sword my my hammer. Um, did he? Do, yeah, because that roots. He had literally planted, yeah, he planted yeah. the hammer. Well, because planted it's hammer. partly Groot, technically. It is. It was made out of Groot. Yeah, yeah. I I want to see the Groot that grows from that that has a fucking hammer head. It'd be so, great. With a history of of co- kind of collecting comics, I, I will say that. I think that they have exhausted all of the villains for Thor, like, you know, because I, I've not even heard of, of this God killer character. Like, and again, maybe he might have shown up in the nineties or something like that, but it was like, you know, it was like when they had whiplash on Iron Man, I was just like, wait, what? Who is, who's this? Yeah. Clown? This is the yeah. second movie. They yeah. didn't even like, they didn't even go like, through the fucking gamut. Right. Like, right. <laughs> Thor comics. I've never really got into Thor himself. I was always like Thor when, Thor Jason. Yeah, Thor Jason stuff, yeah. Avenger stuff, or like yeah. when he's in the team up or something. Oh, very like that. true. Yeah, Same yeah, here. yeah. It yeah. was definitely more he is part of the big yeah. mix. Or like the what if, like the frogs uh the frog Thor, the frog Thor. and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, just the some of the dialogue I, I always like that for Sook and all this other stuff. Oh, uh, right, yeah. yeah oh it was, it was kind of eye rolling, but yeah, <laughs> it's it's yeah. okay when he pops up for, you know, a yeah. panel or two. Exactly, yeah. True. Now, I do have a question. They make a big point in the film to say where, you know, he shows up and the giant lizard, frozen lizard thing is dead. And there's a, there's a, you know, a soldier or a Viking or 
The yeah, it's Lady Sith. Lady Sith. Lady Sith. Yeah. 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 Um, on the ground, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, you have to die in battle to go to Valhalla. How did Jane what? end up in fucking Valhalla? She didn't die in battle. She died in a goddamn puddle. Well, she died from wounds sustained in battle. So if she had died, but that's from what should have happened to Lady Sith. Oh, well, just, she she died in her battle with cancer. Oh, Ooh. so. It might have been a personal battle, but it was a battle. But to get to Valhalla, you die in a battle full of. That's. I mean, that is. Viking I don't think lore. they were specific. Like. I mean, that's Viking lore. I mean, technically, it'd be like yes, I died it, in, in. I died in my battle with depression. They're like, fuck. Technically, <laughs> uh, you didn't die. In, you didn't wow. die from your battle with <laughs> like, cancer. Wow. Like, you you amplified and quickened the death of your cancer because you kept using Mjolnir. So technically, you didn't. You helped yourself die. It was almost like borderline suicide. But suicide for um, a sacrifice for the cause, mm. which also could get you into Valhalla. Like that, technically. Okay, that, and shit too. That, that, right. that may okay. That makes more the sense. The self sacrifice. That makes yeah. sense. Okay. Okay. I, if that's it, then that's I get that. Let's route. run with that for now to stay positive, please. We did get to see uh, Heimdall. Heimdall. Oh, that was that, nice. was, that, well, yep. that was a nice was little nice. piece at the end there. Little little Absolutely. Jizaba. It's always yeah. fun to see. Absolutely, I you agree. Know? Yeah, that was that was positive. His son, who now knows how to. Yeah. Him. Oh, let me say, as a geek father moment, when he temporarily grants the power, grants of Thor, the power to all those kids, fuck, dude. and that one girl had just had the stuffed bunny. It was just clobbering shadow monsters. Was I was, crazy. I was just like, boys, are you watching? Are you watching? <laughs> but, this but also, awesome. like, okay, so this motherfucker, for like his whole career as Thor, has had the ability to imbue other people with the power of Thor, but not like lose it himself. And the number of times that he's been in a position where he's been around other fucking not powered people, yeah, well, fighting, I must feel real douchey. Yeah, like <laughs> Hawkeye's like, yeah. okay, so this fucking eight year old can wield yeah. the power of fucking Thor, but my arrow having ass can't can't get some. When Fuck you. I took out how many people in uh, of the Shatari? How I was on rooftops as a human, just crushing Shatari like that. Fair. Fuck. Thor, you could help me out. <laughs> yeah, just just give me a little juice, man. Just give me the juice. juice. Little juice. Come I on. Just, give me I, the juice. I just the want juice. there to be like <laughs> no film footage of like the Thor imbued children coming back to Asgard with their super powered like scraps of metal and fucking garbage, or like the fucking bunny rabbit that mm -hmm. shot laser beam eyeballs and shit. Uh, because apparently that's the power of Thor too. Um, hey, and hey, hey. and it's don't just it. it's just Hawkeye sitting on the couch with his wife being like. What the fuck? <laughs> Just <pissed laughs> like watching this. Mm -hmm. That would be really good. Like, where was Thor? Dude, like, when they're fighting fucking Thanos for the existence of half the universe, and Thor's like, "Nah, not the right time." Yeah. <laughs> but, well, to, well, remember to be fair, and he didn't find out that he really had that type of ability until Ragnarok, though. After everything was said and done. Yeah, but fighting no, Thanos no, no. Oh, happened no. after Ragnarok. It did shit. Yeah. So, but but not the original Avengers. So, no, but. He still could have done. He could have, but with the fight against Thanos destroying half the universe, maybe you could have. He 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 still could have juiced up a little bit. Somebody, yeah, yeah. yeah. Steve yeah. Rogers, here's a little extra just in case. So that that's kind of where I end up with this movie is that it's kind of all over the place. It doesn't follow its own logic some of the time. It uh, even not. the characters. And this was my biggest gripe is that you know we it's something you're going to run into in any superhero movie or or even comic book is that their powers are variable in power depending on the the person they're fighting. You've got Hulk that's impossible to beat at, in some comics where he's like the strongest creature in the universe one moment, and then other moments being beaten by characters that have beaten him up in the past, or he's beaten up in the past. It all changes constantly on their powers and stuff. There, there's a flux to it. There's a major flux to it, and it's, it's an argument that a lot of people have about comics is that, you know, the powers are... Depend on who you're fighting, on how strong a person is. Uh, that's the case. That's the case with the characters and their personalities in this Thor movie. Is that sometimes they're cartoonish, sometimes they're serious, sometimes they're bigger than life, sometimes they're background characters. Like Valkyrie is a fucking background character for at and least one, maybe half of this fucking movie. Yeah, and it fucking sucks because she's a badass. Yeah, yeah, and she should be in there way more. The, and so that is another thing that they have. They kind of started making sure that when Thor's involved and other extremely powerful characters, there's always like a check. And what we got with Ragnarok and, you know, uh, when it, because obviously if anyone in game, there were things greater than the team and individual gripes. Right, and, right. You know, it was, it was, there was something else more important. But with Ragnarok, you still had 
Hulk. Like, yeah, I'm, I, I, I can fucking throw you across the damn planet, Thor. Don't fuck. With, you know what I mean? Like, there was nobody really to counter counterbalance Thor's because I mean they they had it in technically in the Mighty Thor, but they didn't use it that way. Yeah. You know, does, does that make sense? What I'm saying, like, yeah, Hulk and Thor still fought in Ragnarok, right? Yeah, like, there was yeah. still like oh, yeah. something like, hey, you're not top fucking dog, bitch. I can still fuck you up, and he didn't have that until he fought Gore at the end, and he still, you know, I mean, he got he got his ass handed to him by Gore a couple times, but ultimately, sure. you know, well, that's it. I I think it didn't know if it wanted to be like a. A romance movie, a like a will they, won't they, kind of like love hate relationship kind of thing. If it was a buddy comedy, if it was, it was trying to like have parts of all of those different types of of movies, but it didn't really settle on anything. It, um, besides it being a fucking zany comedy, um, it tried to have action elements, but I wouldn't call it an action movie. No, um, no. I, it. I mean, the fight scenes were good. But it wasn't or, an action movie, yeah. No, it wasn't an action, but I mean, there were some good fight scenes, like like we talked about how Jane was able to use the hammer and stuff, like the changes to yeah. the power. Yeah. And, you know, e- even Valkyrie showing up going, all right, I could still be someone of a badass. I've been ruling the people, but I've still got my skills, you well, know? So would these these kind of very intermittent fight scenes, because Love and Thunder was just nonstop action and battles and stuff, would these not would these intermittent fight scenes in in Love and Thunder, uh, wait, did I say Ragnarok? Yeah, of of Love yeah, and Thunder. It, right. Um, like, would they be nearly as cool without Guns and Roses in the background? Like, probably not. Yeah, it, but again, like yeah. fucking immigrant song hitting just as Thor's hitting the Rainbow Bridge yeah. in Ragnarok is a badass moment. Like, yeah, true. And, and honestly, I did I did dig the Guns and Roses, but with the theme and the and the title. Uh, logo and font they used, they could have went in with s- more. We didn't need to have the whole movie just be just, Guns N' Roses. Just GNR, yeah. Could have yeah. thrown in yeah. some, some crew. Well, well some, Ra- Rainbow in the Dark like, wasn't played until the credits. Oh, Rainbow yeah. in the Dark, yeah. That was yeah. rad, but uh, that could have been, dude. Rainbow in the Dark is like a fucking bullseye option for this fucking movie. Rainbow Road, yeah. Yeah. basically, like, I mean. Right, like, like, like when they first used the goats and, and uh, yeah. Stormbreaker to create the, the bridge yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah the when bridge, they're on the bridge with the goats, that would have been a perfect Rainbow in the Dark moment. Yeah. Like, why'd they wait till the end? Damn it. So I just mean they could have they the, the soundtrack could have again been amplified from Ragnarok. And to an extent they did, they just stuck with they were like, We're buying the rights to Appetite for Destruction and that's yeah. it. No yeah. no, they I'd used look at the bright uh, side, November they, Rain. Oh, they so, did use yeah, it. Look at the bright side. They could have used Chinese yeah. democracy, yeah. so I mean, Oh <laughs> fuck you, evil <laughs> bastard. Oh w- gross. W- didn't someone have that? Uh, shirt for Use Your Illusions one. Well, um, it was Heimdall's son that had like the yeah. poster and the shirt. Yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, also, yeah. just to lay it down even more, he was like, "No, call me Axel now." Based off that not, one not, band, from, yeah, oh, yeah, from this band from L.A. called Guns N' Roses. What was the, the infatuation singer. with fucking Guns N' Roses? I mean, I love Guns N' Roses, but no. Well, I think mainly because like normally you're just like guns, but they also have roses. So I think that's the love really, and thunder, love the, from the roses, yeah, love, thunder love from the, the gun. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Anyway. <laughs> hey, we I don't, it makes sense to me. Whatever. Fuck it. Uh, what you got? I, I really want to talk about some of the theories that this is leading into. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm sorry, but th- this is what has me hyped because this, again, love and thunder fell short, unfortunately, for what we were all looking for. Yep. But this is totally, I think, what is also building to what the MCU is leading towards which is a few things, like anywhere from Young Avengers, which is why Thor ends up with love at the end, to uh, even West Coast Avengers, and now that we finish up with Doctor Strange, it's Secret Wars. This is all part of hype for the the Phase 4 and for the next, like, what's going to be the next big bad, which also brings up another thing, but go ahead, Um, actually. And I, I'm all for it, obviously, because it's been doing it since it started, where Marvel's been building on itself. But I don't want it to. I, I don't make a filler film with Thor. Agreed. <laughs> like the yeah, I mean, the it, should, it, should, it should all still don't connect. make a filler film. But but that unfortunately, that's what it feels like. I, I know. Oh, and I did. This wanna... is the first original Avenger movie since. Uh, well, I mean, if you count Black Widow. But that was a that period, was that, period piece, yeah. whatever. Yeah. This is the first 
time-wise, the first original Avenger movie since Endgame. Yep. Yeah. And it and it fell short. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it, going with the theory you're talking about, which makes sense them building upon because they have to move forward. But yeah. also, you don't just be lax enough to make one of the original Avengers a filler. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's no, up. exactly. Even though even though it wasn't the best, that's where Love and Thunder is probably our jump point. We're we're gonna see how this converges now with all the. It could have done a better job though, right? It well, yeah. again, I think we've we've stated that pretty clearly. Well, speaking, yeah. of, speaking of better jobs, we're at the end here where we get yeah. to do our favorite part of the uh, the the uh, episode, and also a way for us to do a better job yeah. on some of these line readings uh, oh, from no. Thor: Love and Thunder. So I've got them up Damn. on the screen, and also on our phones as well is uh, is our dialogue here uh, for a little here. segment called "Making a Drunken Scene." Making a drunken scene. <laughs> All right, so we've got uh, two different uh, bits here. One is a uh, three parts, I think, right? Zeus, Korg, and Thor. Oh, and Jane Foster. And Jane so that's Austin. four. So we can do that one alone if we want. That works for me. Um, or we can do a quick a second one if we want to. But I, I do want to be Zeus. I knew it. I really, really, really want to be Zeus. I um, normally take a back seat, but I, I can narrate and do Korg. Okay, that'll work. I'll I'll do Thor, I guess. All right, Brett, if you want to yeah. be Jane Foster, yeah. Are we skipping the Valkyrie line? Well, we, yeah, we saw Valkyrie in there too. Oh, is Valkyrie in there too? Well, um, shit. If I could take it, if nobody else wants it. How fast yeah. can you jump between two voices? Yeah, I'll do two different voices. Okay. Nice, yeah. nice. There you go. So you get the girls. Oh yeah, that's we're giving you the girl parts. Take care, take care of them ladies. Take yeah, care of the ladies. I'll try to do, be, make it respectful. All right. <laughs> Um, all oh. right, so this is for from Thor Love and Thunder. So here we go. Let us see who you are. Oh. And take off your disguise in the flick. Strips Thor naked. Crowd gasps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you flip too hard, damn it. The Olympian ladies faint at the sight of Thor. Should we help him? I mean, eventually. Grape? <laughs> 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 nice. I love the uh, very intense difference between your two absolutely there, between the yeah. two characters. So. Oh, we we, we <laughs> could do the next You're, one real quick. One is right here, and then one is right here, just a little bit <laughs> little perfect. Who yeah, wants to do the next one? I'll I'll do late. I'll do Lady Sif for the next one if anybody wants to do. Thor. Uh, if anybody wants to jump on Thor, I don't. I anybody yeah, anybody I can I do it. If, I, I can okay okay do it. All right, all come right. on, Hobbit. Let's do it. Technically, you have to actually die in battle itself to get to Valhalla. <laughs> oh shit. Don't worry, your arm is probably in Valhalla. <laughs> <laughs> he was oh, fucking hell. Proud of himself very with that joke. Too. Yes, he yeah. was. Oh. Very proud of himself. One of the jokes oh. where, where you kind of want to laugh, but then you're like, I've already heard That's too many so in the movie. Story. God yeah. damn it. Like, are you making fun at your friend losing her arm? Like, yeah, she's yeah. literally bleeding to yeah, death yeah. in front it's of like, you, oh, and you're oh, like, oh, oh, your arm's gone. Yeah. <laughs> but it's in Valhalla, so it's you'll fine. be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Your awesome. arm is more honorable than you are right now, bitch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've got a date with your arm tonight. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, no. Nice. Nice. <laughs> it's just, it's oh. Loki slowly sidling up on a bench next to Lady Sif's arm. On that note, thank you so much for oh. listening to this train wreck um, of an episode about Thor Love and Thunder. It's been a good time. Brett. When are those dates again for yeah, the so Comic Con? So the next one, the one that we should all be looking forward to, uh, so, so you can meet your your famous famous favorite and famous GUI panelists will be <laughs> will be August twentieth at the Richmond Raceway. So thanks for hosting me, guys. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, we'll thank throw, you, Brett. We'll throw up info on that as well on our uh, social media. Nice, um, absolutely. Pretty soon here, and also make sure to rate, review, subscribe, all the things you do to podcasts do to us like. as well. Like Heart. and tell like your friends. Us. Yeah. Word of mouth is the best way to spread the word about this show and the other shows on the network, all available at GUIPodcast.com. Like Boom. Geek Fathers with Scotty P. Hey! And we've got From the Mouths of Madness with Lowdown Brown. I am half. Pew! We also have FU Hunter. And FU Hunter. Yeah. And I'm also, you know, this show and GUI Nights as well. Yes, so. and when, yes with our two dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> Doing dumbassery. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, thanks again for listening to this dumbassery. I'll find you next time for another episode. I'm Mike the Hobbit. I'm Lowdown. Join us or die. Shut the fuck up, Hobbit. Join us or die. Join us or die. Or I will swallow your soul. G
www.guipodcast.com. Oi, Christian Bale, machinist, have the power. <laughs>